Hello IT pros, welcome back to my IT workshop. So in this video I'm going to try to explain what an IPv4 address is. This is the second video in the series. If you haven't watched the first one, I really encourage you to do so because we're going to talk about concepts that need explanation from the first video. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So let's start. An IP address looks like this. 10.1, 10.2, they are not all the same. You might have seen a variance of this somewhere. In my case, this IP address 192.168.1.154 is the one I'm using right now in my computer, in the one I'm recording this video. So now let's try to define what an IP address is. Um, an IP address or internet protocol address is a numerical value that help us identify a device in a network. Just like your name. Uh, your name is unique, or at least for the people that knows you, so they can tell you apart from other people, let's say in your, in your job, in the school, in a crowd of people. So that's the uh, objective of an IP address, to identify a network, uh, I'm sorry, identify a device in a network. Now, uh, let's go back to the same example, 10.1 and 10.2. Uh, an IP address have certain characteristics that they don't change. And one of the first characteristics is that each IP address is unique. So in a network, nobody else is going to have the same IP address because there is going to be an error. And actually the system doesn't allow you to have. The second is that each IP address is formed by four bytes. And I'm going to show you. This is the first byte. This is the second byte. The third one. And the fourth. So this is a rule. You cannot have more than four bytes in an IPv4 IP address. Um, uh, another characteristics, characteristic for an IPv4 address is that each number, let's say 10, 1, 10, or 2, can, can only range from 0 to 255. So no negative numbers and no number over 255. So if each byte is equal to eight bits, we have, and we have four bytes, eight times four is equal to 32 bits. So, you know, we are talking about uh, computers. So computers are communicating decimal like we do, they do in binary. So we are going to use two to the power of 32 to know how many uh, IP addresses we can get. This is going to give us a number beyond 4 billion, which is really, really big. Uh, but this will let us know that the IPv4 protocol can support up to 4 billion, more than 4 billion IP addresses in total. So these IP addresses is the ones we are going to see how they work, what ranges do we have, and all that. Um, for the next slide, we are going to start saying that there are two types of IP addresses. And we are going to talk about private IP addresses. Private IP addresses are used locally, so they don't go to the internet. So they stay whether in a small network like your home, small office, or a big corporation like a bank or hospital. Um, the point is they stay inside, they cannot be used in the internet, only in your internal network. And I'm going to explain a little more. But for now, we have, um, for private IP addresses, we have ranges, like we were talking about, like I was talking about a few seconds ago. The IP ranges we have for IP4 are as follows. So we have three ranges that assignable IP address that we can use. Um, the first one, uh, each one of these addresses has uh, a fixed amount of possible addresses. For the first one, we have more than 65,000. For the second one, we have more than 1 million. And for the third one, we, ha we have more than 16 million. No network in the world, no company, it doesn't matter how big it is, needs these, uh, as, these many IP addresses or devices at the same time. But that's that's good for us to know the number. Let's talk about public IP addresses. When we are surfing the internet like you might be doing right now, watching this video, you cannot do it on your own. You have to hire the services of an ISP or internet service providers. These guys are actually the ones that allow you to go to the internet. Uh, public IP addresses are also known as 
routable IP addresses because they only live in the internet. They cannot be assigned in a local network. So this, uh, the ISP allows you to go to the internet, like places like Twitter, Facebook, email, or any, I don't know, YouTube or any other that you may like. As you can imagine, public IP addresses also have a range, also have ranges. In this case, from 9 to 1 to 9, 11 to 172, 172, 32 to 192, 167. Um, these uh, IP addresses lives in the internet alone. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm on a Windows 10 computer right now. If I open a command prompt and I ping google.com, it's going to give me an IP address, a public IP address, which is 172.217.6.206. So this IP address falls in the range for public IP addresses. You are never going to find um, a company, a website that falls outside these ranges. I'm going to do the same for Facebook, and we have the same 31, 13, 71, 36 that falls into ranges. You can try any other like Amazon.com or the bank that you use, and it's going to fall in one of these ranges as well. Um, now, the next one I'm going to talk about the reserve IP addresses, and as, it, as its name suggests, these IP addresses are reserved. You cannot assign them, you cannot use them, whether in a public IP or as a private IP. You cannot use it. The first one, for example, 169, is uh, we get this IP when we are not getting uh, a, a local IP address using DHCP. The second one is reserved for the system itself, and the third one is for broadcast. So everybody receives the packets in this case. These are the three more important, in my opinion. There are a few more, but for now, these should be enough. Now, you might be wondering, Hey, can, is there a way for me to find my public IP address that my ISP is given me? And the reason is yes, you can. I'm going to leave the description, in, the link in the description below, so you can check what IP address you are being assigned. Don't worry, this IP address can be changed. Can can change to today you can have one, tomorrow you can have another, or after a week or after a month. Uh, that's because the ISP decides to do it this way. So that will be for the video, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't, I'm going to probably, I'm going to make the third one in the series where we will be talking about um, the second part of an IP address, which is a, a network mask. Now, um, if you like this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.